Hey guys, what is going on? This is iAppleGeek. Today, I want to compare the speed of all the existing iPad Pros that have come out in the past few years. So if you're thinking about upgrading to one of these iPad Pros, hopefully this will give you an idea of what each one is capable of. And also because you guys want to see this video, and I am absolutely thrilled to be making this. So thank you guys so much for the support on the last episode of Chip Contest. But uh, anyways, let's get the show on the road, shall we? No, I can't forget, no. When I saw you on the day. All right, so the iPads I have today is the 9.7 inch first generation iPad Pro, followed by the 10.5 inch second gen, and the latest 11 inch third generation iPad Pro. Now, of course, each of these comes with their bigger 13 inch brother, some with an extra gigabyte of RAM, but honestly, that is just to make up for the screen size or the storage capacity. Now, aside from the outer design differences inside, each of these iPads has an X version of Apple's processors found in their iPhones. The X variations are always more powerful, more graphics intensive than their iPhone counterparts. Now the ones you see here are one generation ahead of the last one. You may notice that there is no A11X in between the A10 and the A12X. That's simply because Apple decided to completely skip it and jump to the A12, which I'm really glad that they did that and you'll see why throughout this video. All right, so I'm gonna clear out all the apps from the multitasking on each of these iPads and then we can head to the Speed Lab. And yes, I dusted off an old hand from my closet to help me out. All right, so the tests I'm gonna be running today are not just benchmarks. I'm also gonna be applying some real world situations like video editing and graphics processing. Of course, let's go ahead and take a look at the Geekbench scores. This is a measure of how strong each iPad's CPU is because the CPU handles all processes on the iPad. This is important because it doesn't matter how good the device is if the experience isn't smooth. All right, it looks like the 10.5 inch iPad Pro went ahead and finished up first, followed shortly by the 11 inch iPad Pro. And as you guys can see here, it doubles the performance of the previous generation. Finally, we have the first gen iPad Pro catching up, revealing a healthy progression from the first to the second gen, but a massive jump from the second to third gen. All right, next up, I'm gonna be testing Antutu benchmarks. This is gonna test the graphics performance of each iPad. And as you guys can see right off the bat, the 11 inch and the 10.5 inch are a heck of a lot smoother than the first gen. It is worth noting that the 11 inch iPad Pro has a custom GPU made by Apple, whereas the previous iPads use ones from other companies. All right, skipping to the end here, the first gen has a score of 192,000. The second generation has a score of 285,000, so a good healthy gain, about 50%. And the 11 inch takes the cake with a score of 540,000, which is almost double that of the 10.5. So we've got massive, massive GPU gains here with the latest generation of the iPad Pro, especially when compared to the same chip on the iPhone. All right, let's put some of this graphics power to the test with Asphalt 9. This is a game known for its graphics intensity, so launching all of them at the same time, let's go ahead and see which one finishes up first. All right, so it looks like the 10.5 inch iPad actually pulled ahead of the 11 inch just by a split second, but it could be that at the point of recording this video, Asphalt 9 has not been optimized for the new iPads and that could have given the 10.5 an edge. However, I still would have expected it to come ahead just because of the pure amount of power. And at long last, we have the 9.7 inch iPad Pro finally catching up. All right, let's move on to a more practical test where let's say you have to load a PowerPoint for AirPlaying in the conference room or hooking it up through USB-C on the new iPads. So I'm gonna be importing the exact same PowerPoint from my Dropbox account into the PowerPoint application installed on each of these iPads to see which one comes out on top. So PowerPoint has to import the slides from Dropbox first and then load them on the screen. And it looks like we just go right down the line from newest to oldest. Now I know there's many people out there who use their iPads for music creation. So that's what I wanna test right now. I'm gonna export the exact same song inside of GarageBand to see which one's the fastest. Here's the tune. All 
All right, so each of these iPads are gonna be exporting in the same uncompressed format. And as a side note, yes, I have sped this footage up a little bit just for time's sake in this video. And it looks like the 11 inch just barely pulls ahead of the 9.7 and 10.5 inch. So the difference is really not that much. Maybe it's because my project was so small. I'm sure with larger projects, uh, that time will get extended. All right, so I'm gonna rearrange my iPads for this next test, which is an iMovie test. I imported a few of the 4K clips from my iPhone XR review, stitched them together with some transitions, and then slapped some music in the background. Nothing really that fancy. It's about one minute long, and I'm gonna see how fast each iPad can handle this. So all of them are gonna be exporting in the full 4K quality. By the way, the first iPad to ever have enough power to edit a 4K video was the original iPad Pro. So I think it's very interesting just how much Apple has progressed with these more advanced mobile processors. Because if you think about it, every second or two that one has over the other, over this one little one minute project, when you have a very long project, a fully edited video, that difference is gonna be multiplied by several times. So as you see here, the second and third gen don't really have that much of a difference, and it's only really apparent under intense loads. Now the difference is a little more apparent with third party apps, as you guys can see here. Inside of Adobe Premiere Rush, I have a 4K clip loaded into the timeline. Now for some reason, Adobe Premiere does not support 4K exports, so I'm capped at 1080p, uh, unfortunately. But for the most part, if you're just making a consumer level family video or home video of some type, you're probably not gonna worry about the quality too much. I mean, as long as it looks great, if it's good enough to share, then it should be okay. Because many times when you edit on an iPad, you're not gonna be doing too many complicated edits. You just wanna get a viewable video out there, like maybe for Instagram or whatnot. So the 11 inch finished up very quickly here, followed by the 10.5 and the 9.7 inch like clockwork. Unfortunately, that is the downside with these iPads is that you have mobile applications that don't take full advantage of the amount of power there is, especially in the new uh, third generation iPad Pros. Cause you have such a powerful chipset, but no applications designed to take advantage of it. Now, of course, that's going to change as time goes on because at this point in time, it can't quite replace a laptop just yet because of the software limitations and the lack of third-party apps designed for this much power on a tablet. But hopefully this video has shown that throughout each generation of the iPad Pros, Apple has been making leaps and bounds in its processor game, especially with the latest two models. But like I said before, because of the iOS limitation, the first gen and the latest gen have the same capabilities. Now, of course, there are other factors you should take into account, like the overall design, the size, and the support for new accessories. So if you're coming from an older iPad that isn't a Pro model that you've seen here, you're gonna get a lot of advantages with the Apple Pencil, with the keyboard, with the huge processing gains, but all of that only matters if you know how to use it, if you have a way to take advantage of that power, because otherwise, it'll just feel like one expensive toy. At least until Apple unlocks the full potential of their iPad hardware. All right, you guys, if you wanna see a video about how I make these videos of all these devices, uh, be sure you leave a comment down below, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one. And if you do subscribe, I will see you in the next one. Good.